hey, I'm Trisha from Club Scrap, and I'm just not finding it here. It should be somewhere between the word velvet and velvety. Well, I don't really care how to spell velvetize. Let's just do it. <laughs> Now I was recently in upstate New York and my friend Phyllis came running up to me when I got there and she said, I have to show you my great little book. And the minute I took a look at her handmade book, I thought, I've got to bring this to the show. You're going to love it. It's made out of no mat board whatsoever and just a whole bunch of 12 by 12 paper. So let me show you how this book is made. I'm starting out with some printed paper and this has been measured to 6 by 12 so it's easy to remember and I've made a couple of score lines. The first one two and three quarters in from the outside edge and the second score line at three inches. I've also done that on the opposite edge so I have four score lines on my paper. So when I fold on those score lines I've just made my book cover. Now it doesn't really seem like much of a book right now because it's not very stiff but I don't want you to worry about that quite yet. What we do want to think about, however, is how we're going to close the book later on when we're finished with it, and so we need to do a little bit of pre-planning for that. I've got a craft mat here and a cutting knife. I'm going to make a little slit right here on this inner score line, about three quarters of an inch long, and I'll do it on the other side as well. Now that slit is going to house a twill closure for our book. So basically when I want to add my closure, I'll be sliding the twill into each of these slits from the inside of the cover back to the outside. But we're not going to attach that quite yet. We do need to finish our cover. And to do that, we're going to just add an extra piece of paper. Now if you look at this, the paper has been trimmed to just slightly smaller than that six by six final book size. And this is going to be attached to one of these shorter flaps here. I need to glue it into place, so let me show you a trick as to how we're going to do that. I'll center this cover piece on this short flap so it's the same distance around the perimeter here. Then I'm going to hold it in place and I'll open up the flap and then I'm going to take a pencil and just mark a guideline for myself. That way I know exactly where the adhesive needs to be placed in order to keep my cover attached at the right spot. Now I've got some book binding glue here. I'm just going to add some glue to this panel and smooth it out a little bit. And you've seen me do this a lot because we love to make handmade books. And when I lay this down, I don't even need to look at the front of my book. All I need to do is center it on the top and bottom and along that straight guideline that I drew. And when I close the cover, it should be in the right spot. And it is. Okay, so that's one side of the cover almost completed. I've gone ahead and cut another piece just a quarter of an inch smaller than this square. This is five and a half by five and a half. But don't worry about that because of course that'll be in the design guide. And you can see how this frames itself around here. So I'll attach this and the inside of my front cover will be just as beautiful as the outside. Now you're going to repeat that on the short flap on the other side of the cover. So let me just show you what that's gonna look like when it's all been assembled. When you open it up, there's the other cover that's been glued in the way I showed you. You'll open that up and we've inserted the twill on both sides. And so now the outer cover of our book is complete. Well, of course we need some inside pages. So let me show you how those are gonna be put together. This is so easy, you're gonna love it. I've got three sheets of paper that have been trimmed down from 12 by 12s. They're five and three quarter inches tall and 12 inches long. And I've scored it three inches in from both of the outer edges. So there's just two score lines here. When you fold along those score lines, basically you're creating, again, a six by six inch page on the inside and two shorter flaps on the outside. Now these are going to be the pages of your book. Now I've done that two additional times, so let me show you how these pages actually will come together. So here's our score line, our short flaps, and then we've done that again here. All you'll simply do is glue these two flaps together with your book binding glue. And when the pages are completely assembled, they open up like this. So there's one set. This will fan out this way. There's the other. And then these are your two glued pages. When you attach them to the inside of your book, you'll just cover the back side of this page set with glue and then lay it in here and then your book will close. And we have a lot more to do by way of decorating our book with some really touching embellishments. Well, since all of the pages of this book aren't protected by page protectors, I knew I could add a whole bunch of embellishments that would really be fun and tactile. And the solution to that are these Marva Yoshida Puffy Velvet Fabric Markers. Now I know the word fabric is in the name of these markers, but you don't have to just use them for fabric. And I wanna show you how fun it is to decorate our little book with these markers. Now what I did was I discovered that the color of 
these markers really changes when you heat them. So I made myself a little sampler sheet of all the colors that are in the package, and then I've puffed them so I can see the difference. So when I choose the colors for my project, I've got a great little sampler here to help me make my decision. So what I've done is I've chosen, starting with basic black. Now all the markers are in the package here, and the markers need to be shaken before you can use them. So we're just gonna shake them all at once. And then I'll take out the black marker that I'm going to start with. And when these are new, you'll need to prime the tip of the marker. So just get some scratch paper and tap the marker until the paint starts to saturate the tip, and then you can go ahead and use them. So I've got this cover piece that already has a printed pattern, and it's very, very subtle. However, when I go in with my marker, it's really going to enhance this quite a bit. And it's a very opaque look to the marker when it's being added to the page. If the color is a little brighter than you were anticipating, don't worry about it because you've seen in your sampler that this really looks a lot more muted when it's been heated. Now I'm going to bring one that's completely been outlined with the marker and I'm going to use Marva Yoshida's embossing heat tool to heat this. Now this particular heat tool heats up to over 600 degrees and while it does that, it's going to puff this and you'll notice I didn't have to use any messy powders or anything, it just happens. In fact, my nine-year-old daughter thought this was the coolest thing she'd seen since sliced bread. Now, it probably might be a little bit difficult for you to see this, but I can certainly feel that this surface is really velvety and smooth. It's just so much fun to touch, so it adds a whole new dimension to your album. Well, that's one of the covers now that we're going to be using to decorate our book, but we also have all kinds of other possibilities, like, for example, stencils. Now, I've got another piece of paper that will eventually be on the inside cover of my album, and I'm gonna take this teal color here. I've already primed the nib, and I'm going to just fill in the opening of this stencil with the marker. Now, it's really important to understand that the slower you move with the marker, the more paint is going to be left behind on the paper, and then the more puff you'll get when you heat it. So just keep that in mind, and you can really control the amount of puff and the velvety feeling that you have by the amount of paint that you've put onto the paper. All right, so now that this is all filled in, I'll carefully lift up my stencil, because it does have wet paint on it, basically. And then I'll come in with my heat tool and puff. And I love to incorporate stamping into my projects, too, and this is a perfect match. I've gone ahead and stamped this dragonfly image in a black dye base fast drying ink. And then I went ahead and colored that in with a teal and the sage and a black. And then I even added some little travel dots there behind the dragonfly. And let's see what this is going to puff up to be. Okay, so here we go. Let's get some action in our dragonfly. Oh, I love that. There it goes. And you can see the color change on the wing there. See, you don't even really need to be an artist to play with stuff like this when you have rubber stamps and printed papers that you can embellish. What about some die-cut matte board? Actually, I went ahead and colored an entire sheet in all the different colors that were available, put the puffy velvet on this braille die-cut here, and when I heat it, it's going to actually be a raised braille surface. You see the color lightning? Then you know it's ready. Okay, well, I must confess, I didn't even stop there. I've got this wonderful sheet of stickers here, and I've gone ahead and colored this one in, and when we raise this, it's gonna be a really fun sticker to look at. All right, well, now that we have all of our embellishments prepared, let's take a little tour of that fun book. And doesn't this look fabulous? Our little twill closure opens up to reveal those velvety matte board die cuts. And it, right away, the book is already interesting to look at and touch. It just is so inviting. Then on the inside, I've already begun adding photos. There's that Braille sticker that has been raised, and this has also been velvetized. And each of these little flaps will offer something brand new to look at. The raised number stickers right here, Inside, we have the dragonflies flying around, and those, you're just gonna to wanna to touch this. I'm sure this kind of project would be wonderful for a children's book. Opening this up too, we have our stickers. You can easily do this on a Saturday afternoon. Well, I think your challenge is to go make something extra special and then velvetize it. Have fun and thanks for watching the show. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips. Oh, <laughs>